Samuel Adams. Savor the flavor responsibly. Jalen and Jacoby is presented by Samuel Adams. He is Jalen Rose. I'm David Jacoby. We are Jalen and Jacoby. What, what is up, it that no? we do? We give the people what they want. Fit seamless hire. You have a two-time former MVP as a first-time coach. You have an innovative offensive line who just happened to coach that player who's got his first job. That coach just coached in Houston. They didn't meet expectations. He's looking for a job. It's only right that he now gets a chance to join Steve Nash's staff because Nash is gonna clearly need support as a first time coach. In particular, when you now have Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, it becomes win the East next year type of expectation. So adding Ime Udoko, Udoka, mm-hmm. who's somebody I've talked to, I played with him actually, and somebody that I've talked about deserves an opportunity for a head coaching job. I think they're doing a really good job filling out their staff. Amari Stoudemire was also on that Phoenix Suns team that I was a part of as well. So it does make sense when you're a head coach, Jacoby, you just want to get people that you can respect, but more importantly, you can trust. Look what happened to Mark Jackson. He was in Golden State. Ownership forced a couple of people on his staff. Those same people betrayed Mark Jackson to the point where they went on and got other jobs with other teams. And Mark Jackson still doesn't have a head coaching job. It's very important to have assistant coaches that you trust. And we always say success is a function of realistic expectations. And I have to say, my expectations for this Nets team are very, very high. When we talk about the East, we always talk about the Celtics and the Sixers and now the Heat. But in my mind, the Nets, they're trying to win the East this year and they kind of should. They've got Kyrie Irving, they've got KD, they brought in Steve Nash. Now they have Mike D'Antoni, let's not forget, Levert, Dinwiddie, and Jared Allen, who I love, and let's see if they re-sign Joe Harris. They've got themselves a really good roster and now a really strong coaching staff. I expect them to win, and if not win, be in the Eastern Conference Finals this year. But that year will come. Right now, we're in the midst of a very intriguing NFL season, and we have a huge game on Sunday between the Ravens and the only undefeated team in the NFL, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Jalen, what are you keying on for these Steelers? My keys, keys, keys is you got a Hall of Fame quarterback under center who's been healthy all year, and he's got a chance to nurture a terrific young wide receiving core. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going to be watching for this weekend. Johnson, Claypool, Juju, can they get open and hold on to the football against that physical secondary of the Baltimore Ravens? The Ravens do have a great secondary. That receiving core will be tested. However, it is... The other side of the ball for the Steelers that I am keying on is that is the fact that they are so good at creating pressure on the quarterback. They blitz, and they blitz often, and they don't even have to when they have Dupree and Watt on the line. And I don't know if you've noticed, but Lamar Jackson has not handled the blitz well this season so far. The numbers tell me that with Lamar Jackson getting blitzed as often as he's going to on Sunday and with the pressure that the Steelers can create, that this is going to be a very difficult day for that Ravens offense, which is why I'm going on wax and saying I have the Steelers not just winning this game, but I had them winning easily. And on Monday, we'll be talking about what is wrong with the Ravens. Who do you have in this one? Wow, it's hard for me to pick against Lamar Jackson. And I know you can look at the passing numbers and they're down from last year. The rushing numbers are down last year and you're going against an undefeated Steelers team. But it seems like these be the moments, in particular in the regular season, where Lamar balls out. And so Mm. if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers, there's one thing to blitz the quarterback when he's passing Jacoby, but don't forget the run. And they're gonna be without Bush as well, who's dealing with an injury on that defense. Yep. Baltimore will have some opportunities to run the football if the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to be blitz. And therefore, I believe Lamar has the best game he's played all season. The Baltimore Ravens get it done at home. Well, we'll see who is right on Sunday, and we'll talk about it on Monday. But one thing we'll definitely be discussing on Monday is it is Tua time in Miami. They host the Los Angeles Rams, and it is going to be Tua's first start. And you feel a certain kinship of a brotherhood with Tua. Why is that, Jalen Rose? Fellow lefty. 
And I talk mm. about this a lot in basketball. When you're watching the NBA, just remember, there are teams that don't have a left-handed player. 90% of the NBA shoots with their right hand. That also exists in the NFL. Since 1950, Jacoby, only 40 quarterbacks huh. have taken a, taken a snap that were lefty. Huh. How about that throwback footage? You know who that is? Youngsters. His nickname is the Snake Kenny Stable, and that was to Branch. That right there, Steve Young. And that receiver is probably the greatest player of all time, Jerry Rice. And that's my guy, Slick Vic. And so for Sua to now enter the left-handed class of anointing, I expect him to go out and continue to put on for the lefties like some of the guys we show already on the show. And I've said it before, and I will say it again, that this is one of, if not the greatest QB draft class of all time. From what I've seen from Burrow, from what I've seen from Herbert, and what I expect to see from Tua, I really think this is a very special, special quarterback draft class. But we have so many more games to get to in the NFL, and one of those games is also in the AFC. It is an AFC East matchup between the Patriots and the Bills. And Jalen, something has happened to Cam Newton since he has come back that has just absolutely baffled me. He has completely disregarded the right side of the field. He only throws across his body to mm. the left. It makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. Mm. He looks left and he throws left on every single snap. Why is that, Jalen? Do you have any explanation for this? Well, this is what I talked about. That last throw is what I see, Jacoby. How the ball starts really high and it ends up sailing to the turf. That's what I see. It could be the coaching staff protecting him, feeling like he can't make the throw on certain plays that they draw up, which in the past as a former MVP would seem like something that maybe they're covering up an injury. But either way it go, there's no excuses. He said it. He got to get out there and ball, and what a better time to do so. The Patriots have owned their division forever. Now we're handing it to the Buffalo Bills. We had our guy Benny the Butcher on. You know yep. the Griselda going to be celebrating Buffalo, jumping on tables, excited about this Sunday, taking the crown from the Patriots. This is a chance for Cam Newton to hopefully renew some of the play that he had earlier in the season if he's going to maintain this job, Jacoby, because he's going to have to play well whether they win, lose, or not. This is a make or break week for the New England Patriots. If we wake up on Monday and they are two and five and they've got Cam and Stidham and Hoyer and no future, Pull the plug. I really suspect that they could trade Stephon Gilmore if they find themselves at two and five. We'll keep an eye on that on Monday, but another thing we're going to keep an eye on is this. Is shout out to our producer, Tony, who pointed this out. Now, Jalen, I want you to get in the mind of these Honkers. legendary Hall of Fame athletes. You've got Tom Brady and Drew Brees, who are in a touchdown race. They're one touchdown in between the two of them with Breeze one touchdown behind Brady. The Saints play the Bears this weekend in that Bears defense. I'm asking you as a former athlete, do you think they're cognizant of this? When they take the field, do they have an eye on what the other one does? Do you think they know that they're in this neck and neck race for most touchdowns of all time? They both know when asked, they should acknowledge that they know because they're both students of the game. And if you're Drew Brees, this is your claim to, I don't have six championship rings, but I do have more touchdown passes than Tom Brady. So then now later you can make the case that you play better in the regular season, but he was on better teams. And they both know each other's age and they both realize that the clock is ticking and so, yes, this becomes regular season motivation, Jacoby. Some of these games, when you're 40-plus years old, like, you can't be as enthusiastic as when you first started. That's just human nature. This gives both of these all-time greats something to go out and be enthusiastic about making it happen each weekend. You know how they always say that father time is unbeaten? I think Tom Brady actually is up 
on Father Time. I think I think Tom Brady's like one and zero against Father Time at this point. <laughs> because you know, one thing I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna sit in this room and speak into this microphone and talk about Tom Brady or Drew Brees being washed for the rest of this season because it ain't happening. I fixed my lips and I thought that, that Drew Brees was washed. Guess what? He proved me wrong. Remember when Tom Brady lost to the Bears on that Thursday night and he, he thought it was fourth down or third down? It was fourth down and we thought maybe he was slipping. Guess what? Now he looks like the best quarterback in the league. I'm not calling either one of these players washed until I am absolutely positive of it and they have shown me nothing up to this point that they are washed. And Jalen, we have some bad news in college football. What I suspect will be the number one pick in next year's NFL draft, the best prospect I've seen in with my two eyes in my life, Trevor Lawrence has tested positive for coronavirus. Interesting. Now, his Clemson Tigers play Boston College this weekend, but next weekend they have a game against Notre Dame, a huge game for both programs. Jalen, the ACC has a protocol in which if you test positive, you do not play or participate for 10 days. That would make him missing the Notre Dame game. What do you think happens next weekend with Trevor Lawrence? See, I'm going to say what a lot of people are thinking, in particular those that work in this business but don't really want to say. If that timeline that you just acknowledged is accurate, the report shouldn't be that Trevor Lawrence is out versus Boston College. It should be he's out versus Boston College and Notre and Dame. And Notre Dame. No one's saying that. Okay? Because that's a 10-day quarantine. And if he got it this week, that takes you, no matter how you try to... Um, uh, how, how you try to navigate the days of when he felt s symptoms that takes you through next Saturday. And so what we're going to see is what we didn't see with Wisconsin when their quarterback in the big 10 who has different protocols are standing on it. In this case, the ACC Oh, and Notre Dame is going to be in the ACC one season. And these teams have a chance to play twice, maybe even three times. If Trevor, Trevor Lawrence, Lawrence is breathing and wants to be on the center, regardless, it seems, of COVID-19 protocol so far, it seems like they're still going to play them next week, which really balls up any paperwork and throws in the trash any protocol that's on the email that says something about 10-day quarantining clearly when next Saturday's game falls within that window. Now, he said he's experiencing mild symptoms, and if he is healthy and ready to play, something tells me that we learned about his positive test today. However, they will move the date in which he had the test or had the <laughs> symptoms, so he will be available to play in that big game against Notre Dame. We'll keep an eye on that. And make sure you keep an eye on ESPN, because when we come back, we've got big news for Michigan basketball. We'll tell you what that is right after this. You're watching Jalen and Jacoby. Hail to the victors! Jalen and Jacoby. Big game in the Big Ten this Saturday night at 7.30 on ABC. It is the Buckeyes of Ohio State traveling to take on the Nittany Lions of Penn State. Make sure you tune into that one on Saturday night at 7.30 ABC. We are coming to you live from Pier 17 in the South Street Seaport and brought to you by Chase. Welcome back to Jalen and Jacoby. Jalen, there's a lot going on, so we need you to decide what we discuss. It is time for Keep It Moving. Woo! Tang! Woo! Tang! If you want to discuss the topic, say hit the brakes. If not, we will keep it moving. And we start with the big matchup in Michigan this Saturday afternoon the between the Michigan State the and the Wolverines. After the win in Minnesota, can Michigan stay undefeated and go to 2-0 and this afternoon on Saturday? Shout out to all of the JRLA students, past, present, and future at both of these schools. Michigan State lost to Rutgers last week, and they were brought to the Big Ten to donate their check to the conference. Therefore, I expect us to wax mm. our in-state rival this weekend. Wax! Like the Beastie Boys, you know how they say, put it on wax! That's what I'm expecting this weekend. Stay tuned. Well, that would be some good news for Michigan football. We have some good news for Michigan basketball. Keep it moving or hit the brakes. Hit the brakes. Hit the Five brakes. Five-star recruit Caleb has confirmed that he is committed to go to Michigan and play for Jawan Howard. What do you think of this information, Jalen Rose? 
I think this is the highest rated recruit to commit to the University of Michigan in 20 seasons. Mm. That's what I think. Congratulations to Jawan Howard and his coaching staff. I think they continue to do a great job of maintaining what John Beeline was able to rebuild at the University of Michigan. This is a quality young man who attended the camp when he was a young player. Things continue to look up for my Wolverines. Hail to the victors. The Chicago White Sox have a new manager. Keep it moving or hit the brakes. 70 plus years old. I ain't mad at Tony La Russa. He's a vet, but keep it moving. Keep moving. We keep it moving. We keep it moving. There was a very mediocre football game last night between the Falcons and the Panthers. <laughs> keep it moving or hit the brakes. Julio still a beast, but keep it moving. Keep it moving. We keep it moving. We keep it moving. Joe Burrow and the Bengals look to take down the Titans Sunday afternoon. Keep it moving or hit the brakes. Titans, I need y'all to take care of business for my guy Dunlap and his parking spot. We're going <laughs> to keep it moving. Henry, I need 175 and two TVs. We keep it moving. A gentleman by the name of Ben DiNucci will be <laughs> the Cowboys starting quarterback. Keep it moving or hit the brakes. Hit the brakes on this one. Hit the brakes on this one. Hit Wait, the brakes. You think when Ben DiNucci showed up at training camp, do you think that he would be starting in a division rivalry game with the star on the side of his helmet? Like, what is going on in his mind right now as he heads into this big game for the Cowboys? When this guy is starting versus a division rival, you know what that means? You got a terrible GM. That, mm. That's what that means. You have a terrible GM. It's 32 teams. Most teams carry two quarterbacks. Some carry three. That's only 90 to 100 total people if you max that out in the world. You can find a third string quarterback, Jerry. But no, you want to pick somebody that may not get into the game and now all of a sudden they're in a game against Carson Wentz and they're going to get Jalen Rieger, their first round pick at receiver back. I'm going Eagles this weekend. I would love for Ben Tanucci to just light it up this weekend. I would love for that so much, although I do not think it's going to happen. We have a big game, Brandy another division Graham rivalry between the Vikings and the Packers. Keep it moving or hit the brakes. Man, what about the Vikings, how they've gone in the wrong direction? Great to see Adams mm. get going last weekend. They're gonna, the Packers are going to get Jones back. Keep it moving for now. Keep it moving. We keep it moving. We keep it moving. Jalen, scientists are reporting that there could be water on the moon. Keep it moving or hit the brakes. Well, it sounds like something George Clinton told us a long time ago. Hit the brakes. <laughs> okay. So there is water <laughs> on the moon, which means there's air there. There's an atmosphere. Do you think one day human beings will actually no. habitate no. the moon? Here's what I think. When you get your check, I want to sell you some land on the moon. How about that? Can I sell you some land on the moon? What do you think about that? I want to sell you some land. I probably couldn't afford land even on the moon. I do not have Jalen Rose money for <laughs> Jalen Rose type of real estate. We have some new information about who I consider to be the best prospect in the NBA draft. We'll tell you what that is and who that is right after this. You're watching Jalen and Jacoby.